Hello everybody, I'm Sarah. I'm the Real Simple Mama. I'm hiding <laughs> out here in the wilderness checking out some wild chickens. But on a serious note, let's do a video talking about did my chicken just sneeze? We're gonna be talking about different colds and illnesses and upper respiratory infections that your chickens can get. We are gonna delve into the symptoms and a little bit about different treatments. So let's get started. This is summer of 2022. Over the last few weeks, I've actually been dealing with a chicken who has successfully gotten over some kind of upper respiratory infection. And the chicken in mind is over here. She'll come over here in a minute. Her name is Gracie. She's my barred rock. But before I did a video like, oh yeah, your chickens can get sick. I don't know how you can help them, but <laughs> I wanted to go through the process myself to see did this treatment really work. And so this is going to end up being two videos. The one that you're watching right now, this, that's talking more about the illnesses, here are the symptoms, this is what's normal and what's not, and then talking about some treatment regimens that you can do that yes, includes um, homeopathic type things as well as actual medications. By the end of August, 2022, I'll also have another video out that's specifically how to give an injection to your chicken. A lot of the medications that I'll be talking about you do have to inject them into the breast meat of your chicken and so i have been putting together a couple of little clips so there'll be a video about that but this is the video that's going to talk about like i said some of the different diseases that chickens can get here are the symptoms here's just what's normal flock stuff and this is when you need to intervene and then some treatments so first of all yes chickens can get upper respiratory illnesses we're going to call them uris just the general like colds illnesses those types of things. There are specific ones, of course, that your chicken can get. Um, the symptoms are gonna vary. I'm not gonna go into detail. That's more something that if you're interested or you feel the need, go Google it, go research it. But chickens can get all kinds of things. I know avian flu has got some people kind of spooked right now. Chickens can certainly get something else that's called coccidiosis or coxy. This is how you spell it if you are interested. That is one that happens in San Antonio fairly commonly. Chickens can also get cholera, which is like, what? They can get bronchitis. Um, there's a whole bunch of other upper respiratory type illnesses that your chickens can get. And I'm hoping one's coming around the corner here in a second. Jeez, it's like the chicken run with no chickens. Um, so the reason I started this video was to kind of joke like, did my chicken just sneeze? So while chickens digestive systems and obviously their reproductive systems and some other systems in their body are quite different from humans and other mammals, chickens their respiratory system is largely the same as ours right they have nostrils they breathe in oxygen they have lungs they have a trachea all that kind of stuff and so chickens can get respiratory illnesses symptoms let's talk about symptoms some of these things just like i mean just with you and your partner or your kids or you know anybody else who's in your life one isolated just one little instance of one little <laughs> or one sneeze or something like that is not reason for you to panic but like everything else, you need to look at a combination of, okay, are we checking lots of boxes? If there's lots of symptoms going on here, what about the frequency? Is this happening really often? I will say once we get into the second half of this video, which is the treatments, there are some homeopathic things or like some natural things that you can do. And the good thing about those things is they're usually really cheap and there's usually no risk factor, right? Which is like, well, if this isn't really gonna help, at least it's not gonna hurt my flock. Of course, when we get into the medications, you need to kind of be more confident that like, yes, my chickens do actually need this medication instead of just, you know, injecting them with a whole bunch of stuff that they didn't really need. Symptoms wise, yes, your chickens can sneeze and they will sneeze. They can get congested. They can have a runny beak, which sounds adorable and pathetic all at the same time. Okay, I need to move because I know you guys are like, man, I don't wanna just sit here and look at this plant. So chickens can, and there's Gracie right there in the middle of your shot, hanging out by the pool. So chickens can sneeze, they can be congested and sniffly, just like your little kids, you know, you're hanging around the breakfast table or whatever and your, ch and your, your chickens and your toddlers are kind of like, like they're kind of congested, they're kind of sniffly or whatever, that can happen. The thing that I will say before we get a little bit more into the symptoms is you do want to be cautious. You do want to be cautious because upper respiratory infections, URIs, like I was talking about earlier, and that's gonna be sort of my generic term for any of the colds, viruses, illnesses that your chickens have, right? That's gonna be my blanket term. 
upper respiratory stuff can get really nasty in a chicken flock. There's a lot of other things. I mean, let's be honest, your chickens are outside all day. Like they literally poop breakfast and they eat rocks, right? There's some things with chickens that's like, man, they are just so hardy and they're so intuitive and they're just awesome. And I don't need to worry about that. When it comes to upper respiratory stuff, you do need to be careful. There's a couple of reasons why. Number one, chickens will hide symptoms that they are sick, that they are injured, that they are otherwise not feeling good, that they're towards the end of their life because they don't want to attract predators to the flock. Remember, we're thinking instincts of like wild flocks of chickens. They don't want to attract predators. And honestly, a lot of times the flock will be like, look, you're going to attract a predator because you smell like death or because you smell like blood. Sorry to be crude, but it's true. And they will actually like kick out older or injured or weaker or sicker members of the flock to try to protect everybody, right? Like we can't have you like this beacon of illness calling predators over to us. So chickens have gotten very good at masking symptoms. That means they're not gonna go around and be like, mom, can I stay home from school? Like they're going to try to hide the symptoms that they don't feel good unless it's really, really bad. So that means you need to be out with them on a regular basis. The other thing is, unfortunately, for whatever reason, upper respiratory stuff can travel really quickly through a flock. So you've got birds who don't want to show you that they're sick. And then you've also got the fact that chickens can be really susceptible to upper respiratory stuff, which means you just need to be vigilant. And I don't say this to freak you out. I say this because I very much believe in knowledge, not fear. And you're here watching this video on YouTube about chickens. God knows what time it is right now when you're watching this because you care. And so that's why I'm here to help. You can also get chickens, so we've talked about them sneezing, about them sounding congested, they're sniffly. You can also have chickens coughing. That's less frequent. Um, that can be a couple of other things that I don't want to freak you out about. But usually if they've got an upper respiratory thing, the two main obvious most direct symptoms are that they, like I said, they've got a runny beak. <laughs> and that they're sneezing and that they sound sniffly. They sound like they have like mucus in their beak, like their beak is wet. You can also notice sometimes, I mean, depending on how old your chicken is and the time of year and a whole bunch of other factors, but chickens will sometimes, we're just going to stand in the pool. <sighs> sometimes that means that they will stop laying because their body is like, whoa, whoa, whoa kind of like I need to stay home from work so that I can recover. Their bodies will say, it's not important that I lay an egg every day right now. What's important is that I get better. They can often be pale. Um, I'm out here showing you my chickens like in the peak of the evening when it's still pretty hot. So you can see that they are, I mean, my birds are hot right now. Um, they're pale. They don't have that bright, beautiful red comb and wattles. And they just act like, you know, you're, if your chicken is sick, they act like they don't feel good. They're listless. They just, they're not out doing chicken stuff. So you should see chickens, right? They're pecking, they're digging around, they're eating, they're preening, they're fluffing around. They, they will lay down and, and kind of just relax and rest throughout the day. But you, when you can just tell like something's wrong, they don't have an interest in treats or they don't come when you call them or, you know, whatever the case may be. So be thinking about all of those different symptoms. And if you start to see many of them, here's what I would do. Look at the treatment options that I'm going to talk about right here. And again, I'm going to have another video coming out in the next few weeks that will show you specifically about giving injections. I do also have a video here that you can see that talks about what you should have in your medical kit. It's not the injections specifically, but it's just some other good stuff to have. I would say if you feel like, yeah, there's a chance that we're actually dealing with an illness, I would treat everybody. I would definitely do the homeopathic things that I'm going to talk about first. I'll talk about the um, the prescription or two or three that um, that I've used that I recommend at the end of this video. Definitely treat the whole flock. Because, like I said, by the time you notice it in bird A, it's possible that it's already spread to everybody else. So, you know what? Just use your chicken tenders journal. That's what I use to keep track of all the medicines. And this is when so-and-so came into the flock. And this is when I dosed so-and-so. And this is what time they lay eggs and all of those things. You can buy the chicken tenders journal. It's in the video description. But keep track of everything. Dose everybody. The last thing I'll say before we go into treatments is some of the treatments, particularly if they are prescription or like actual heavy medicines, um, you have to do them more than once for them to be effective. Same thing with like us taking an antibiotic, right? If you just take one dose or half of the doses or whatever, it can end up being more problematic later in life. So if you're going to be giving the actual medication or anything that you do, make sure that you follow the instructions, of course. All right, let's talk about treatments as Gracie completely tears up the chicken coop. You guys notice they've knocked down like their, their food bucket and everything too. 
The bad thing about these homeopathic things is it's kind of like, you know, if you have, I, I don't know, if you have pneumonia, in my opinion, you can't just take tea tree oil and it's going to like completely help you out. Like you kind of cross the line where it's like, okay, I need medical intervention. The good news about the homeopathic things is if you want to try them, there's like very little to no risk, which means it may not completely knock the illness and get my chickens back to 100%, but there's no harm in trying. So if you don't already have like a regular regimen of doing apple cider vinegar in the water every once in a while, um, or electrolytes or raw garlic, I recommend you doing at least two of those. In my opinion, on a regular rotation, you should have electrolytes. Um, you can see in my medical kit video, there is something called Rooster Booster, which is electrolytes. It smells like vitamin C. It's very much like you giving yourself like an, an autoimmune, an autoimmune boost. There we go. Take two to help out. Um, you can also put, I recommend either using the raw apple cider vinegar that you've seen in some other videos or raw garlic in their water. But you could do it every day when your chickens are sick, but on a regular basis when your flock is just hanging out and all the systems are normal, you should only do that like less than 50% of the time. You can put them both in water and don't worry about any of this stuff that I'm saying being really stinky or like, oh God, I bet that tastes terrible because chickens have almost no sense of taste and smell. So they're like, hey man, it's fine with me. On that note, with the raw garlic, there are also things that you can feed your chickens. You can put them on treats or something that you know your chickens are gonna wanna eat this. Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt is wonderful. Don't worry about low fat or any other goofiness or like that has fruit on the bottom. Like just give them plain Greek yogurt, full fat. If your chickens are not used to eating that, put a whole bunch of like black oil sunflower seeds or grublies or whatever treats you give them over the top and then they'll end up eating the yogurt, you know, accidentally, unintentionally. You can put whatever you want on top of it. Put the, um, the red pepper flakes, cayenne powder, chili powder, the raw garlic that I was talking about. There's all kinds of healthy stuff and that can just kind of help boost up their immune system to give it like an extra charge. Now, if they've got coxie, for example, or they've got cholera or bronchitis, a little bit of raw garlic's probably not gonna be enough, but it can help their body be stronger. There's also something that I like it. I don't think it's a game changer. Again, I don't think that it's, an, and of course I'm not a medical professional or a vet or anything like that, but in my experience, it can help your chicken to be stronger so that they can better kick an illness. But this in and of itself is not enough to like actually get rid of like an actual virus or an illness. It's called Vet RX and it comes in a little bottle. It's a couple of ounces. It's not expensive. It lasts forever as long as you leave it inside. And VetRx is basically, it's sort of like Vicks Vapor Rub <laughs> for chickens. Um, it smells really good. It's a combination of different oils and you can put it on your chicken's beak, on their comb and on their waddles. Basically you're putting it around their face so that they breathe it in and it can help clear up their sinuses a little bit. Again, it's treating the symptoms. It's not giving a cure. It's not curing anything. It's just helping your chicken to feel a little bit better. But VetRx, again, there is no risk to it. I've also heard of people putting it in like the actual like water cups, like where your chickens actually dipping their beak into drink because it will coat the because it's oil it'll sit on top of the water and it will coat their beak as they drink and you can apply that stuff on them every day just go to your chicken and like kind of rub it on their comb and waddles so you're welcome to do that now let's talk about actual medications now i'll say again i am not a medical professional i'm not an avian vet i'm just a crazy chicken lady who's out here you know who cares and who's done a lot of reading and research there are two medications that I have used in the past that help with URIs. Now remember, a URI is a germ. It's not the same as a worm, as a parasite. So we're not talking about, um, you know, dusting for mites or lice. We're not, <laughs> why isn't it dripping? We're not talking about uh, using Ivermax or Ivermectin, which is what I use for worming my chickens a couple of times a year. This is a microscopic germ. So this is different. There are two medications that I've used. One of them, I, I mean, I guess both of them you could use preventatively, but like I said, I would not overdo the whole antibiotic thing. These are medications. You can get them without a prescription, at least in the United States. I have gotten them from, I mean, basically anywhere that you can buy chickens or that you can buy chicken feed. So for me in Texas, that's tractor supply. Um, some of your other pet stores may get it. You might be able to get it online. Denigard is a liquid. It is a water additive, which is nice because all you have to do is drop it into wherever your chickens drink. You measure it and you just clean it out every day and add it as needed. The other thing that's nice about Denigard is that it has a dosage that's just like, this is a preventative dose. Like my chickens aren't sick. 
I'm just gonna give them this as like a boost versus here's a stronger dose if my chickens are actually sick. So it's a lot less effort for you. It's not an injection, it's called Denigard. The bad news is you can't control exactly how much all of your chickens are drinking. So it's convenient, but it's not as accurate unless you put your chickens like each in their own little cage and you monitor exactly how much everybody drinks. You know, some, some chickens, it may, it may help them a lot more and some it may not. I've used Denigard a couple times in the past. Honestly, at this point, the only time that I've needed to use Denigard is when I bring in new chickens, I give them a round of Denigard in their water while they're quarantined away from my flock. That way it's just like a little extra boost for them. I do dewarm them when I bring them into my flock too. Um, but on a normal basis, I don't ever really have to use Denigard. I'm sorry, there's so much noise. The other medication that we're gonna talk about is called Tylen. This is how you spell that. There are different Tylens, they have a different number on them. And the different number that's on them, like I'm gonna talk about Tylen 50 and Tylen 100. Tylen 50 is one that you are really supposed to dose twice a day. Tylen 100, you only have to dose once a day. So we're talking about the concentration and, and how much it's gonna help. I got my bottle of Tylen from Tractor Supply. It comes in a vial. Tylen is an injectable. Um, and so I have used Tylen 50 on Gracie. It worked for her. And so now I'm also completing the regimen on everybody else too. That's what you'll see in the video that I'm talking about, about how to give an injection. Um, of course, the problem with Tylen is that it's more work for you. You need to have a syringe. I talk about what kind of syringes to get and all of that good stuff, but you need to have that. Um, done. If you're using Tylen 50, you have to do it twice a day for, it's up to you, between three, four, or five days, depending on how sick everybody is. I did it for, I think, three days on Gracie, and she was good to go because she was not super crazy sick. If you get Tylen 100, like I said, you only have to inject them once every day. Hopefully, you can get a chicken tenders journal so that you can start documenting. This is the medication that I used and when. Oh, there's actually my apple cider vinegar sitting right there. These are the medications that, that I've used and when. This is when I saw the symptoms start. This is when you know I dosed everybody and then by this date we were done and we were good to go. The good thing about Tylen, like I said, I've used Denigard as a preventative and I have used Tylen to treat a sick chicken. Um, I did definitely notice a difference. I mean, Gracie, I can't say that I have her sniffling or sneezing at all anymore. So that's awesome. Um, so definitely the the point of this video is to just make you familiar with some of the different illnesses and to let you know that there are things that you can do and again knowledge not fear but don't mess around with upper rep upper respiratory stuff when it comes to chickens because it can spread through the flock quickly and it can be deadly definitely put down in the comments if you've ever had to deal with upper respiratory issues with your chickens what medications did you use what regimens did you do um, what's worked for your flock and we will all continue to help each other thanks so much for watching